After seven o'clock, we'll go ahead and get started. We'll call the John. Oh, please. Councilmember Cope. Here. Evans. Here. Martin. Here. Ready. Here. Burkhart. Here. I want to welcome everyone that is in the audience. Here for an item that is on the agenda. We will If we have anyone online with us, we do not. Next item on the agenda is and I'm going to appoint myself to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next item on the agenda is the agenda approval. Jim, are there any changes to the agenda? None. Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Second. Discussion? Cindy, vote, please. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yep. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Motion passed. Next item on the agenda is public communication. And we have one list of the Breast Cancer Awareness Month proclamation. Mary, as you know, uh, police and fire uh, normally breast cancer awareness uh, in the month. Uh, to announce and ask you to read a proclamation supporting uh, breast cancer awareness and but uh, we're also going to be wearing a uh, sign that our firefighters came up with uh, during the month of October to raise officers will also be wearing the pink. And the opportunity to match is online and Okay, well, I'll go ahead and read the proclamation, Breast Cancer Awareness 2021 Proclamation. Whereas October is the nationally recognized month for breast cancer awareness, whereas the city of Johnson, Iowa, is committed to helping raise awareness to breast cancer and support cure, and whereas one in eight women will get breast cancer in their lifetime, and whereas this year an estimated 276,480 women in the United States be diagnosed with invasive breast cancer, and whereas it is estimated that over 42,000 deaths from breast cancer will occur, whereas wearing pink is becoming an increasingly strong tradition during the month of October for firefighters and police officers across the nation, whereas Johnson Grimes firefighters will be wearing t-shirts with a pink ribbon, Johnson police officers, officers will be wearing pink patches in October to raise awareness for breast cancer. And whereas the proceeds from the t-shirts will support a local cancer patient. Therefore, I, Paula Dierenfeld, Mayor of Johnson, do hereby proclaim October Breast Cancer Awareness Month throughout this city, and I authorize the fire department, department members to wear t-shirts with pink ribbons and police officer, officers to wear pink patches as a reminder to all the people of Johnston to lifestyle and get regular One thing that we need to add to this proclamation, large no, I mean, most people think of it as just a woman's disease, but it is. I would encourage everyone to 
to do as the proclamation says, be aware of, of breast cancer and, and issues that it creates for, for many people um, every day and also batch and purchase the t-shirt. Person in our community that is Patches this year, but the police officer. Not selling them cheap. Well, if you were lucky enough to get one last year. <laughs> Have one, wear it with pride. Thank you. There, we're still under public communications. Is there any? None. We'll move on to public hearings. And we have four public hearings this evening. The first, 4A, to conduct a public hearing and consider first consideration of ordinance number 10, ending chapter 170.03. 03 to 170.17 related to the regulations for temporary signage. Uh, good evening. As the council is aware, and as we've discussed it uh, previously, uh, due to some um, relatively recent court cases, placement, size, materials, those types of things. So we've been working uh, through that process and what you have before you tonight is a recommended uh, draft. Planning and Zoning Commission did unanimously. I'm gonna highlight a couple of the sections for you and then section two on page one of the ordinance, uh, the items are just tweaking uh, definitions for sign, temporary sign, and temporary testing. Following that, adding a couple of new definitions related to temporary building. Then, as we get into the real um, details of the ordinance under section three, tested rewrite of, of chapter um, 170.17 um, under section one, general provisions. Uh, these would be provisions that would apply to all signs, all temporary signs, excuse me. Highlight some of the features here, not require a permit for any temporary sign. Temporary regulations include regulations for ground mounted uh, window signage. One E, um, maximum area of signage on a given property, whether that's residential or commercial, um, either 48. All conditions about making sure that they're maintained. Lighting. I are related to Not creating a hazard. Cool. Hey, it was a new provision since uh, the council. But this relates to um, placement in locations that might be hazardous, such as right above doorway. Hey, is a little bit of a catch all. Uh, we wanted to make sure it was clear that there are other provisions of the sign ordinance, chapter 170, that are still applicable to temporary signs. And so we tried to cite all of those. Um, L is also new since the council last reviewed this. This came as a result of uh, uh, Christine Stone, callers who helped us uh, with this draft, um, indicated that we had to have some provision on the length of time, maximum length of time on any sign. Otherwise, we're leaving them allow someone to basically build a permanent sign, maintain it in perpetuity. Guys, that it's a temporary. Sign. 
temporary sign not displayed for more than 365 consecutive days. Well, it would become an enforcement issue. And so um, if we have a sign that violating that, we would have to start that enforcement process where we'd have to monitor, try to backtrack when it was installed and how long it had been there. Not going to be necessarily easy to enforce, uh, but this gives us that ability for someone to violate the I understand that. I'm just trying to understand this. You're not actually, this is not a permit. You're not giving a permit, so you really don't know when they actually planted that sign. So I'm asking, how do you actually know it's been 365? Have a timeline where they started it. My question becomes, how do you actually monitor that point in time? I had a sign that became an issue to find any evidence that we had that would indicate when it was installed or how long it had been installed. Um, try to build forward from that point. Um, you know, it becomes a balancing act of all signs. That's <laughs> trying to trying to find the right balance here. This gives us a course it. Um, but it does, it, it will require staff time to sort of build back and try to determine when that. Okay. Uh, I will note, um, I did, um, after the joint PNZ draft some language that related specifically to pop up signs at that meeting was sort of the birthday signs that pop up for 24 hours or, or 48 hours or less. Um, and when I uh, did um, review that with um, Christine, not comfortable, um, she felt that that was kind of creating a loophole that some, someone would take advantage of and felt that enforcement of our ordinance or in those cases, lack of enforcement because by the time you go out to document it, Client and really felt that that was a better approach than than create. Moving into section two, um, this relates to short-term um, signs that are um, intended to be up for 120 calendar days or less. Um, have maximum square footages, maximum heights based on district. Um, and this is uh, where we would allow temporary window signs, setbacks, and we also have um, allow more temporary type sign materials. Comparison as you move down to par paragraph three, uh, those are where we look at longer term temporary signs, um, which longer than 120 days, have maximum areas, um, heights, and setbacks. We have a reduced amount of um, fill, so we're trying to get a more permanent material. That's the distinction between sections. That I'll be happy to answer. Even under the short-term temporary signs, One foot from any property line, two feet from the back of sidewalk or trail. On a front yard, for example, sidewalk should be set a foot. And we included both because we're just trying to make sure we're covering not, you know, not just. There's no sidewalk, then how does that work? Uh, it'd be measured from the right of way or from the property line.
First reading of ordinance number 1061. Move approval. Talking about the when you say H, you're talking about all signs. David, can you comment on that? Councilwoman Martin, I think you need. Requirements that you want to make. Catch them as they're reading through all. I guess the only question I have is the fact that call out vision triangle and on. Referenced in K, but isn't. Was and it, it started as a tentative round of all applicable sections of Chapter 170. And section, and then also the title of that section, catch all staff might catch on that. Hey, we need. Specifically called out the titles in that K to make sure public or someone doing it. Had to more defined of a of a sort of reference. 
back to other chapters than we would normally do. And Other thoughts? <laughs> Sorry. We have a motion to change it. It is a little confusing. Then, then we, if we would have. We have a motion in a second. And, a move, and, a, and another any, motion. <laughs> is there any further discussion? Vote, oh, please. <clears throat> Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? I, the reason I ask that question, Mayor, is usually what we do is that. Moving on to item 4B, conduct a public hearing on the matter of the issuance of not to exceed six, $6,500,000 general obligation urban renewal bonds of the city of Johnston, state of Iowa, and consider resolution number 2021-141, instituting proceedings not to exceed $6,500,000 general obligation urban renewal bonds. Of some additional well let's open the public hearing at 733 this is the time and place for a public hearing and meeting on the matter of the issuance not to exceed six million five bonds of the city of Johnson in order to provide funds to pay the cost of aiding in the planning and carrying out of urban renewal projects under the authority of Iowa Code Chapter 403, including property acquisition in the Johnson Funding General Obligation Capital Loan Notes Series 2018E for essential corporate ur urban renewal purposes and that notice of the proposal to issue the bonds and the right to petition for an election had been published as provided by sections 84.24 paren 3.5 and 403.12 of the Iowa Code. As contemplated by section 3 that the question of issuing the bond. No. Has there been any written objections filed by any resident or property owner of the city to bonds? No. Why don't you do that? And then I'll go for Excuse comments. Me. Um, so therefore, um, I advise the mayor and the council that we've received no um, written objections or oral objections. Uh, time for receiving. This hearing tonight, um, as we've discussed earlier, is for the property at 5055 Merle Hay Road. Ask for any oral objections. 
going to make that statement, but let me do that. Are there any oral objections? Uh, to the Um, <clears throat> so, as mentioned, um, the issuance is 6.5 million, um, but um, there are two, uh, two items that you'll really be talking about, and one of them is the purchase of the property at 5055 Merle Hay Road, and the amount that we'll be borrowing for, uh, borrowing for that purchase is um, $1 million, and there's a current refunding of our Series 2018E was a specific borrowing that we did back in 2018 for purchases of properties in this. I believe maybe one property in the gateway. That's a current refunding. Um, uh, it's taxable. Both of these issues are taxable issuances. Private development. So that refunding par amount is three point. So we're going to be recalling that because that interest rate is higher. Uh, thought that was going to be, I can't um, say that, but I think it's more a, a 3%, 3. So we're going to um, that and do this borrowing as well. Um, the next uh, set of actions the council takes on the will be the reviewing of the preliminary. Explain to you many a times, signing off on that you agree to all. Um, in the staff report that I gave you, I laid out a timeline of what is to be taking place. Um, the, I assume the preliminary official statement will come out about September 27th. I tried to at least a week prior to you adopting it at an official conference. Um, however, we, uh, depending on decide to roll it into the negotiated borrowing that we'll be doing for uh, the town center financing, uh, or if we're going to do a uh, might change some of these dates. I think based upon this schedule, it probably will still be a competitive sale, not a negotiated sale. But our negotiated sale for the town center, uh, we hope to have um, final price and amount for that special council meeting on October 6th. So that would be really pushing it for your October. So um, that's, that's my plan for this um, borrowing, um, an action item that you will take. Uh, and, um, agenda actually allows um, the city so that the sale of this property, which is scheduled to have been um, could possibly take place much quicker than that. And bond funds, it'll pay, pay back immediately into that. Looked at that document in the consent item, there was a With that, I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. This is the item you kind of referenced in there. In the Point one million, two point one million. Go directly right back into water. Two point one, isn't that also? Is what I'm saying is, if we're going to borrow two point one from the water fund, so that I can close on the hotel property in the next week, or two, I get this money in November. Put it back to the water fund because I took it from the water, so I could close on the property. I understand, but in, in the description. Uh, property it talks about the 
That was the sewer one. Water one. Five J. Plus water enterprise fund. Look at if you look at five T. That's that's what we did two weeks ago. Already approved that one. That was a right there. Borrow from water department of fire. So oh, that is sewer. I'm night action for the hotel property is water. Action you took two or three weeks ago now, three weeks ago, was sewer fund for the ignite property. That will be bought, paid back to the sewer fund, but not until we borrow money in 2020. Fine, but as I read an item 5T. I didn't write that, Tom, so I'm sorry that that's how John has it. Two items funded out of the sewer. One's water, tonight's water. That one's sewer. 5T. You said something happened two weeks ago. That it well, two weeks ago is when you actually had a resolution that allowed me to make the transfer. I don't think any of his documents are about the actual transferring of. That's correct. This is for the bid documents that are going to go out for the stormwater and the parking lot improvements north of Ignite. So he's just referencing the fund source uh, incorrectly in this instance. This is item T is to actually release those bid documents out on the street. I'm not now. I'm really confused, but it, but I don't think it's. A... So I, let me just back. Five J. Five T. On the. August, whatever date, that was, 16th meeting, L, action allowing me to transfer. Seven too far. Five from sewer. That seems like a So two weeks ago, night project. Now he's got to bid. It wasn't in the CIP. So when he says in five. Apologize, but was, I'm glad we cleared that up. It was, yeah. it was, I, was I was looking at that consent I, agenda item, and so I thought you were talking about this I, other one. I had not read John's item, so I would have been a little bit more prepared. No problem. Other questions? 
clarifications. Item does not require any action. Uh, resolution. Does it require? Uh, oh, it does have a resolution. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, um, still in a public hearing. Audience on this item. Not. We will close the. Resolution number 2021-141. Oh, well, please. Councilmember Reddy? Yep. Burkhart? Yep. Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Moving on to item 4C, another public hearing to consider the following items related to PC case 21-17, the rezoning of approximately 4.17 acres from C1 to MUROC1. The subject property is located north of Northwest Johnson Drive and west of the Inner Urban Trail. Resolution 21-239, a resolution approving a development agreement with Denny Elwell Family LC and John First reading of ordinance number 1060. Uh, the city council rezoned 2.3 acre lot two of Herd Gardens plat one in July of 2020. Uh, the rezoning was from M2 general industrial district to mis mixed use center. And the rezoning was to allow for development of Johnston Crossing phase one, which was a 50 unit age and income restricted apartment community. And that area would be about two thirds of the blue cross hatched area on the uh, overhead there. And that project is currently under development. Uh, tonight's request is to rezone the west adjacent 1.84 acre lot one of Herd Gardens Plat one from C3 Highway Service Commercial District to mixed use center and the request is made to facilitate johnston crossing phase two which entails a second building housing 50 additional units mixed use center district allows densities up to 25 units per acre and together these two projects total 4.17 acres and 100 rental housing units for an average density of 24 units an acre so it does fall below the the density limitations of the district Proposed rezoning is in compliance with the Johnston Thrive 2040 comprehensive plan, comprehensive plan, which envisioned the Herd Gardens property to develop as a mixed use development with commercial uses along Merle Hay Road and residential uses east of the. Looking at adjacent land uses adjacent to the site, uh, to the north is property zoned R175 and R1A single family residential. Properties are occupied by single family homes. East, of course, we just talked about Johnson Crossing phase one, uh, the, the 50 unit age and income restricted housing. To the south, across uh, opposite Northwest Johnston Drive, are properties zoned M2, general, occupied by light industrial and office uses. And to the west of this blue cross hatched area, is vacant property zoned C3. Buffers will be required as transition between differing uh, land uses, and they are installed with construction of the site, obviously. Uh, in the subject property and those north adjacent single family uses, there would be 20 foot required buffer on this uh, subject property. Between this property and the M2 district on the opposite, buffer required on this site. And between this property and the C3 district west, there would be a 50 foot buffer required. And if this rezoning is successful, uh, we would review those. Time of site plan approval. 
Chapter 180.43 of our Code of Ordinances requires dedication of public parkland for every 1,000 residents added to the community. And the parkland dedication requirement would be tabulated based on these, these additional units, and that would be looked at at the time of final plat or, or site plan approval. Ordinance rezoning this property is accompanied by a development agreement with property owner Denny Elwell Family LC, and that development agreement acknowledges that the density of lot one exceeds 25 units per acre at 27.17. However, when averaged with lot two, the density falls below that allowed by the district. Uh, the development agreement recognizes the total land area to be 4.17 acres and limits that total density to 100 units for an average density of 24 units an acre. I did send uh, notice to property owners within 320 feet of the rezoning area. I've received no written comments, but I did receive a phone call today from one of the north adjacent property owners who stated they plan to be in attendance at tonight. Public comment portion, there may be some public comments. And again, just to draw your attention back to the fact that you're considering two items tonight, um, a resolution approving a development agreement with Denny Elwell Family LC and first reading of ordinance 1060 to rezone the property. Act on that development agreement prior to If you have any questions for me, I can answer those now. Otherwise, we have um, representatives from Woda Cooper who. Um, And of course, you, you're not approving a site plan tonight, um, but it is just a concept, yeah, right? Yep. Sure. I don't believe it is. Is that an existing curb cut?
Karen, um, so And, and mixed use can be either um, vertical or, or horizontal. So essentially when we look at the herd gardens property as a whole, um, the building itself won't be a, a mixed use building. And right, but, for, but, for that reason, it, it fulfills the intent of that, of that mixed use. Um, we're just rezoning the and with mixed use center, um, it does allow uses of the R4 district, uh, but up to densities of 25 units per acre rather than. So in that respect, it's, it, um, this would be compliance with the, with the zoning district classification, but also I, I think it upholds the spirit of the comprehensive plan because we're, we've got a mix of C3 and high density residential in there. But I, I certainly yeah. understand that the whole So I was just trying to figure out why specifically. So as I look at, I'm just looking, I'm looking at the page one of the sketch. Actually, keep up the, Cindy, can you go back to the map though too? 1.84 acres. Two is 2.33 acres. Highlight which of these two parcels is. Sure, and I, did, I, I noticed the other day that the uh, pointer doesn't work on the. But uh, Cindy's got the, the, the cursor on the 1.84 acre parcel, and that's the one we're rezoning. Requires um, no rezoning. So we're only dealing with tonight the 1.84 yes. acres. Yes, it is the the way that, um, and I'm actually taking this project over for Clayton. I'm not trying to uh, pass the buck, but the way he wrote it's a little bit confusing. I had noticed that I would have cleaned it up a little bit. Um, it does imply that we're rezoning both properties. Um, the ordinance very specifically states we're rezoning 1.84. Um, but it's this. So. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, is why, so we, so for that property, we have you, you need three C4, right? For multifamily. Um, no, R4, uh, I'm sorry. R4. Okay. Thank you. You could rezone it to R4, but that would only allow densities up to 16 units per acre. Reason for this, this does. It does allow a greater density, um, but it's also shown in the comp plan as a, as a mixed use. Primary reason is to allow to achieve the densities. That's that was the purpose of my question. There is not one. Um, our our districts go up to R four. Um, might be an R five district. R R four allows. I think R five is mobile home. Um, R four allows up to sixteen units per acre. The mixed use center allows high density residential uses up to twenty five. So there's that. You know, sixteen is as high as you could go without changing to mixed use center. Um, certainly, there's you know we could always zone a PUD zoning designation and, and designate any one. Um, but no, specifically the uh, mixed use center district was is called out as um, four properties east of Merle Hay, five higher densities. Um, so it, it was designed to do exactly what we're proposing to do here.
Other questions for Aaron? Audience that would like to address the committee. Hi, my name is Rick Hogan, 550 Northwest. Backyard, we'll look at a, this. Obviously, lots of concerns. So we're not opposed to any development back there whatsoever. Time ago. Uh, building that's probably 12. plus a roof on top of it. Also concerned about where all these people gonna go. Bike trail there, there's a lot of people packed in a very tight, tight area. Where are these people gonna go? Devastating to see and obviously a lot of very mature trees Probably 70, 70 foot tall pine tree. Contractor that drives up and down Johnston Drive every single day, numerous constantly are backed up, sitting through four. and older so they're probably going to have jobs so all these people are going to be out on the Johnston Drive all day. That being said our street is the backup street so everybody 90 percent 95 percent of traffic coming out down our street is miles an hour down our street they pass us their ass they honk at us they flip us off around there they do have the speed curbs in there driving down the road people challenge you at those speed truck I go through there and it's amazing how many buses that stop on our street Uh, the beauty of Johnston Drive is is driving down Johnston Drive and and it's Building and um, a lot of concrete, and is that what? Well, if staff has some feedback, a couple of the points that you made. We are, you know, we are in the process of improving that in a Johnston Drive. So some of the backup that you're experiencing now, we hope to to resolve going forward. Um, that's 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 the goal, and that's our plan. So. Um, this is not a we're, we're not approving a site plan tonight. So there will be the opportunity to talk about you know how this develops, what kind of buffering goes in place, uh, sure, and and what trees are are retained um, in the process. So those those discussions will come at a later date. And I hope that you come back and have those conversations further with us. 
drainage, you know, we're, we're pretty particular in Johnston about drainage issues. So you're, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of concrete that's being proposed. Well, we will work very hard to make sure that those, all of the drainage issues are addressed and addressed appropriately when that happens. That's some feedback for you. I don't know if Aaron or applicant applicant has some. Add any any feedback for Rick in some of the concerns? Um, certainly, you're you're spot on with the issue of tree preservation. I mean, every time we um, review site plans, we we pay. With, um, <coughs> mentioned the intersection improvements. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know that I have anything to add over 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 what's already. Yeah. Somewhere in there is the uh, Mid American Power Line easement. I don't know if this property, I think it backs right up to it. So, and that. Um, yeah, the, the entire um, width of that power line easement, nothing can be built in that area. To have a buffer requirement there on the north side of the building, yeah, to, to either supplement what's there or minimum planning requirements for buffers. Property line in addition to it, power line easement. Yes, they're no different. It's the same buffer requirement. <clears throat> And that's something I'd have to follow up on at maybe the second reading um, because I don't have that information tonight, but I'm happy to go out there or. or uh, I'll dig back into that issue, um, find out which trees you're referring to and, and follow up on that for the second reading. The other thing that I would just add is that very cooperative in doing this. We know that it is our expectation that they will done it in the past, and we expect them to do it.
I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. I said, well, it's still fairly early, but I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm on Eastern time, Mayor. It just <laughs> looks like it's late. Um, Mr. Hogan. Uh, off my apologies on behalf of the development team for not engaging the neighbors. Our market open a little bigger old people in your building I said, <laughs> keep those old built people in your building yeah. i'm just teasing <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh what we envision here is is give you a hard time about the old people and you call them seniors and I'm 60 I turned 67 today so we've got to come up with a different term <laughs> okay so any other we're still in a public hearing on this is there any other audience or questions if not then we need to take action on resolution number Dash 239 while we're, we are still in the hearing, and now I'm being corrected. Uh, yeah, to take, I, I, I misheard you. I thought you were going into the ordinance, and you're absolutely right. Take action on the resolution first. Sorry. So we have resolution 21 239 before us. Do we have a motion to approve? Second discussion. Twenty one seventeen is the P and Z case number. Um, we number all of our cases when they come in the door. Um, but the second page, third page of the staff report's got the resolution on as twenty one. That's uh, approving the development agreement with. Yep. Other discussion. Vote, please. Councilmember Burkhart. Yeah. Cope. Yeah. Evans. Yes. Martin. Yeah. Ready. Out of the public hearing. First reading of ordinance number 20. We have a motion. Second.
further discussion? I would just add, I, I think that council personally, we have to acknowledge that they higher end of what we could, I'm comfortable with it. Those who have raised concerns about density, Comfortable supporting it, but I just Any other discussion. Any vote, please. Councilmember Cope. Yes. Evans. Yes. Martin. Yes. Ready. Yes. Burkhart. No. Thank you. We have one more public hearing this evening, and that is to consider resolution of nine, approving and authorizing conveyance of an easement interest in real property to the Andrew C. Christensen Vocable Living Trust. Uh, on March 16th, 20, the City Council approved a resolution. Trust. property there. Diligence period of six months uh, that uh, right on the future project alignment that would go up to Altman property, which is the um, and to work through Now ready to move forward with closing on the property, uh, but during that due diligence period, Christians from Trust did make two noted requests. First, property by the city of Johnston from Urbandale. Second uh, request to grandfather the development property, the red outline properties. Well, this easement uh, would be final step in the closing of the property. Uh, staff recommends holding public hearing. Mr. Adam. So I just want to make sure so that how the process on this would go. resolution closing has not occurred it would Public hearing on this matter is it second? Vote, please. Councilmember Evans. Yes. Martin. Yes. Ready. Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Motion. Moving on to the consent agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Move. Second. 
Vote, please. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. <clears throat> Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Yes. Evans? Agenda item 7A, the non consent agenda. Consider change. 849 and 50 with Hanson. Put together the staff report, I believe, is also available online. So, Adam, the artwork allowance. Are we, do we envision additional public? The answer is yes. Uh, we identified four, five places for public art. That the mural. process being as we allocated all I think the ripples piece is that's all of our art budget but, just, but we're still but purchase. that just because we have spent it all doesn't mean we're going to stop <laughs> I hope that does not indicate for the last that we're that I'm. Um, and then, uh, what, kind of an unrelated question: On our, whenever we have the artwork of the town center, right at the corner is a fountain. That's still planned. Uh, that was just a, an artistic rendering by our landscaping company. We've And I would encourage us to revise our artwork. Actually, we, it we looks just, really cool. And I keep thinking, oh man, that fountain's gonna look really great. Early on, it was designated, uh, I believe in the early master plans as future. That I think just translated in their head. Actually, there's some new renderings out. What is to be constructed, the two Hanson buildings. Other questions for Adam? Okay. Question? Councilmember Reddy? Yes. Burkhart? Cope? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Consider resolution number 21 246, establishing a deer management zone on several private. Um, at the last city council meeting, the council on the public properties. Um, We've got six private properties that have uh, requested to be hunted this year. All six of them have been approved in the past. Robert's property number six was not last year, but it had been hunted. In so anyway, all these properties we, we've allowed hunted, hunting on most by all the adjacent property owners that. Um, Ask if they want to have make it. Property, pri private property owners that are adjacent to the. Also, have any questions for Jim?
Well, I, I, um, <laughs> I told Dave since I was physically going to be here, I'd go ahead and do this. So he just might be online. I don't know. He's online. He's listening to it. But I said. Anyone in the audience that would like to address council? A motion to approve resolution. Second discussion. Councilmember Burkhart. Yes. Cope. Yes. Evans. <laughs> Martin. Yes. Ready. Yes. The item seven C. Consider the following items related to the preliminary. Northwest 86, 86th Avenue, adjacent to Harding. Resolution 21-253, a resolution approving. Norma Harding owns approximately 74 acres north of Northwest 70th Avenue and west of Northwest 86th Street. The property is outside city limits and it appears on the. And the Hardings have submitted a minor subdivision plat for the property to create 10 acre lot one that will contain an existing home, uh, 62 acre out lot Z for future development and a street lot for road expansion of Northwest 86th Avenue. I think some out there, so the boundaries of those lots will be shown. Um, lot one is in the bottom um, left-hand corner of the screen there, uh, L-shaped, um, 10 acres in size, there's an existing home on it. And so essentially what this plat accomplishes is, is it splits that. That outlot will be uh, marketed and, and sold. For At that point in time, you would review it. Um, while this property is outside city limits, it's located within our two mile extra ter territorial review jurisdiction, uh, which allows us to require the property be developed consistent with our subdivision requirements. Uh, the property is zoned rural residential district under Polk County zoning ordinances, and that district is intended to provide for low density single family development served by septic systems and complied with public water in unincorporated Polk County at densities of approximately one unit per acre. <laughs> And again, while it's not in city limits, it is um, shown within our, our future growth area. 52040 comprehensive plan. And the property is depicted in the plan as suburban residential. And that density would allow residential densities of two to four units per acre or lots from a quarter acre to a half an acre in size. House that sits on the lot currently is served by septic system and, uh, and well water. Of course, the plat under consideration tonight uh, includes no extension of public utilities and no proposed streets or new buildable lot. And any, any future platting action to further subdivide out lot Z would likely entail extending sanitary sewer to the, to the property and water, as well as payment of district connection fees, as well as park land dedication fees at that time. Property will require city services to develop in the future. We've asked for an irrevocable petition for annexation. And we've also asked for a petition waiver for future road improvements. In addition to the resolution approving the preliminary and final plats tonight, there's also a resolution to accept that irrevocable petition for annexation and a resolution Twenty-one dash two fifty-one. Councilmember Evans. Yes. Martin. Yes. Ready. Yes. Burkhart. Motion 
have a motion to approve resolution number 21-252. Councilmember Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Evans? Yes. Cope? Resolution number 21-2. Councilmember Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Cope? Item 7D, consider resolution number Last month, the city council approved the final plat for Chesterfield State's plat two. And um, with that approval, the city council um, acknowledged developer contribution uh, or payment of their, their sewer district connected. $5 um, sanitary sewer district connection fees, of course, are levied on new subdivisions to recover the city's costs that uh, are incurred with construction. And of course, in addition to district connection fees, the developer is responsible for installing sanitary th sewer throughout the subdivision and providing a sanitary sewer service stub to each property in the subdivision. And the original design, um, Cindy, if you'll go down a little bit so we can see that graph, the original design of, of this subdivision um, failed um, running sanitary sewer to serve lots 8 through 28, uh, draining to the north and connecting uh, through an off-site easement, sanitary sewer uh, terminated from Hidden Valley Estates, which was between lots, gosh, I think it's 18. You can see the arrows there, um, lots 8 through 28 were to drain that way. Um, it required um, approximately 600 lineal feet of sanitary sewer main to be installed through existing easement on that east adjacent property that wasn't part of the And when the contractors attempted to bore that sanitary sewer service, rock shelf that they could not get around, they could not get around. That prohibited that original plan for sewer routing. And in response, um, the developer raised the lots at the rear of the subdivision so that everything would then drain south um, and east. Sanitary sewer service. And the developer incurred costs trying to um, route sanitary sewer through that offsite easement, totaling $24,874. Requested city reimbursement of those costs. Have in the past, um, the developer for the cost associated with bringing sanitary sewer to the boundary of a subdivision. actually um, succeed in bringing sanitary sewer to the boundary of the subdivision, um, but these are costs he incurred trying to, to do that. I don't know which Crosshaven plat it was, but we, we have done this previously. Costs associated with getting sanitary. Uh, resolution 21-256 authorizes reimbursement of those costs to the developer. And um, anything, one more thing I might add, um, you might ask why didn't we take care of this when we approved the plat last month? Um, the developer had made the request of me and I didn't get it on with that staff report. I didn't get it on that. Developer is in the audience with us tonight, if you have any questions. Um, I don't think that we have a strong recommendation on the matter. Um, I, I turned the, the funds actually would come out of the. Uh, of yeah, it would come out of the uh, North.
Well, I mean, it, it has capacity to serve these lots um, in the, in the, the uh, ultimate routing of the sanitary sewer or, you know, capacity to serve um, these lots. I don't know if It, it could have possibly lessened capacity, if, but it, Matt's saying there shouldn't be any concerns about it. If we had gone two different directions, it would have lessened. Matt's saying this doesn't pose any issue. Uh, perhaps through some exploratory drilling, some soil borings. Um, that's an easement that we had acquired. Um, the property owner to the east. Split that piece off and sold it to one of those um, south adjacent property owners. And when he split that piece off, the city said, hey, we're going to need to get sanitary sewer up to serve this other property in the future. And at that time, we acquired an easement, that piece of property off. So, you know, I guess in a way, the city was saying this is the preferred sewer routing if we're, you know, acquiring an easement. But perhaps there could have been some soil. No, well, no, because typically when they when a developer comes to us or a landowner and they're asking for a subdivision, we we require the easement as a condition. Where is the easement? Is the easement? Yes. When the Mr. Hoffman, who owns that the 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 piece that Cindy's got the cursor on now, he owned the piece to the left. Cindy, if you can move me up right there, um, it was all part of one lot. Um, he split it off and sold it to one of the south adjacent property owners there. And when he split that off, he came to us with a plat, and um, we said, as a condition for approving this plat, we need an easement from Hidden Valley Estates to. Um, we didn't. I mean, that that arrow that's being that's kind of pointing to the that's north the approximate east. location of the right. easement. But we didn't. I mean, didn't the decision that the developer made to run the sewer? That was his decision um, based on the topography of the lots um, at the time. Okay. Sanitary sewer. I'm sorry. Based have, on the yeah, what? On the on the elevation Topography. of the lots, right? So it's um, it's gravity, right? Right. It it wouldn't at the time sewer wouldn't flow to the south. Um, so it's a right. It's a gravity issue. Right. So that's why we had acquired the easement, and that's why he chose to go to the north and east. Um, when he determined that he could not go through that easement area, the way we worked through the gravity issue is that he elevated that north. Um, portion of the subdivision to allow for gravity flow of sewer back to the south. And so how is that going to, the land that's... There, there is some property to the north. Um, it's, it's got limited development potential. Um, there's um, the topography well, you, you falls don't, off. You don't own the land, Aaron. I'm sure the city. <laughs> we we, we discussed this in depth when we looked at this, when we approved um, I don't own it either. But, uh... but um, Right, that, that's an issue in contention. Um, the the owner, yeah, it, it looks like they could get some lots on that, but it does have, because of topography, limited development potential. Um, I guess I, I'm struggling here to to understand.
guess I need to hear why. It's not like he's connecting fewer lots to the system. He's still connecting the same number of lots to the system. Still going to put the same demand. And I get oh, Mr. Bill, they're going to want you to come up here yeah, and talk about it. You're going to do it. You need to come to trust. Bill, Will Lanzi, he's the developer. I'm the developer of Chesterfield Estates. The only thing, reason I'm asking for this is my engineer and the city engineers at the Went this way and it didn't work out. Well, and obviously, I mean, I presume you you probably would have been happy to go the original route too, because then you would have avoided having the cost. Probably had to put a fair amount of money into raising it. Yeah, it, it got expensive to do it the other way. I'm not asking for any of that money back. I'm trying to get through that structure. Try to follow the easement that. Required and in Iowa, you usually don't figure you're run into a rock shelf, you know. Costs that we required, and then we just required a lot more costs of engineering, raising the cost. They wanted us to go that way, yes, from my understanding. That type of direction would have come from. Development plan that's that's presented to us and in, in, in the state that Will presented the plat. I mean, you look at the you look at the topography lines, right? right. Well, I I haven't heard enough information. I don't not sure I necessarily want to vote it down at this point. I'd suggest we table this item. I could be wrong. Maybe there's. Well, I could go back to my engineer and talk. To Is that a motion to table? Yes, it is. Second. Second discussion. Go, please. Councilmember Cope. Yes. Evans. Yes. Martin. Yes. Ready. Yes. Burkhart. Yes. Item under the non-consent agenda, and that is to consider approval and. A motion to approve. Councilmember Evans? Yes. Martin? Yes. Ready? Yes. Burkhart? Yes. Cope? Motion. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Cope. I, I knew it was coming. <laughs> motion passed. Quick one tonight. Moving <laughs> on to item. Eight, city administrator staff comments, Jim. Just had one thing I wanted to talk about tonight and um, it relates to the, the town center grand opening event. And I, I certainly wanted to recognize the efforts that, that staff took to make that event to be very successful, particularly Adam Plaguey, who was sort of our 
our quarterback, if you will. He he really worked with Venue Works and everybody involved in in really making that a, a successful event. But everybody in this room, all of our department heads, were were very active in the in the project, um, and our staff as well were, were very active. I mean, the the planning started months and months ago. Um, but then, you know, right up to the event, you know, every department had their role in trying and making sure that this was a, a very successful event. So I, I just wanted to recognize everybody. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously our department heads, David, Teresa, Matt, uh, Eric, uh, Dennis, and, and um, Jim, and John Smiths were very involved. Cindy was certainly very involved as well. And then uh, Janet and, and Maddie with all the the communications that went on to make that event and let people know what was going on. So I, I just felt like, you know, it, I, it was important to recognize everybody. And I just want you all to know that uh, um, it took a, a huge effort and basically almost everybody in the organization were, was involved at some level. And um, I think at the end of the day, we, we couldn't have um, asked for anything better for, for the event that, would, that happened that day. So. Just wanted to share that and and make sure everybody was recognized for their efforts. Extraordinary efforts went into putting that. That took a whole symphony <laughs> to to play that song, and it played incredibly well. So thanks, thank. I don't know that I've ever received so many comments. What an amazing event it was. Beaming and so proud that he, Johnston, this is their home. How we represent ourselves now. So it's first run at how we're going to use the yard going into the future and it was uh it was incredibly well all anxious to see what we're going to do next so i don't know if we can can match what we did before but uh you know our residents have high expectations set the bar 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 high um and uh you know we'll, uh, we'll have to see what we do next Good job to everyone. That was that was an amazing. And then just one other item. I uh, just particularly want to um, call out Teresa. Um, you guys probably are aware of if you. Um, I'm sure you read the information on our AA plus bond rating that we were able to maintain uh, with a significant amount of um, uh, borrowing that we're doing at this point in time. But uh, a lot of hard work goes behind the scenes and in, in preparing and working with our finance advisor and and making sure we have all the questions answered. And, and uh, so I, I, um, I, I reminded myself this afternoon, because actually I, I didn't have a chance to read the, the document that, um, that confirmed that, but I had an opportunity to read it today. And, and uh, I just want to recognize Teresa for her efforts there. Teresa, thank you. <laughs> Great work. Else, Jim? All I had this evening. Any other staff comments? Without all of you. <laughs> and I spent with whoops. <laughs> so excited to throw stuff around. And I spent it with all spent it with all of you. I'm so choked up I can hardly say it. Councilman I say, I was echoing Jim and uh, both you Jim's guys. <laughs> Same thing about the cities. Uh this the event that happened a couple of weeks ago. Really, really good, well organized. I would like to thank everybody, right from you, Jim, right on every staff, everybody who did, and everybody who did at the background, 
they just did the setback and did a lot of things that made it happen. But really excellent work you guys did. Facebook page, really well organized event that happened. Thank you everybody, including the police department, fire chief, everybody, you guys did a great job of that. Thank you. Councilman Cole. Yeah, it was a great evening and, and thank you. Um, wanted to, a couple of other things. I am, um, last Monday night, the PNZ meeting, I decided to, to Zoom in and, um, and, and had a lot of discussion with them. It was kind of a night where I think if every, anything could go wrong technologically, uh, started out the Zoom camera was only showing of course, I sit in the middle, so why would I? But, and so the two people who sit where Jim and Sharesh sit, you couldn't see them when they were talking and their microphones weren't working. So I was watching and so I would, I would send a text to Dave Wilburn, hey, I can't hear him or I can't see him. So he'd fix and adjust or whatever. And then um, uh, Keith Wiegand, Keith works for CDA and Keith, um, was making a presentation. And I know Keith because his daughter and my daughter play on the same softball team. So Keith is up at the microphone making a presentation talking about the Ignite program. And every time he turned his head, you, you couldn't hear what he said. And I thought, well, I know Keith. He doesn't drop out like that. Um, and I, then I thought, well, maybe it was just because of my, I got bad internet at home. So then I dialed in. And everybody else who was speaking from that microphone, you turned your head away from that microphone. It completely lost everything you said, so it was really hard. So then I then I sent an email to Teresa, and, and of course Cindy is like, "Duh, I've known this has been an issue for six weeks, and we're working on it. And be patient." So I appreciate that very much. I did not say that. No, you didn't say that, but you did not say that. <laughs> Cindy handled it very professionally, but it, it is as as wonderful as um, as so many things are happening. We do need we have a, a ways to go with our technology still and so we just need to keep and I know everybody's working on it and it's a priority it was that was a hard meeting to watch I kind of knew what was happening so if you're somebody who who citizen trying to pay attention you couldn't and so we we just really need to work on that second of all um, one of the items that was on that agenda was a development that's uh, happening on uh, Caliper development that I would encourage everybody. There is a couple of, it's a pretty significant development that, um, so I, I think it's gonna be on our next council meeting agenda. I would encourage everybody to really look into that. That the, There's a lot of moving pieces with that project. Put that on everybody's radar screen. Um, and I think that's it. Member Bur Burkhart. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> 
for a week. feel the weight, but Some time ago, this was before uh, we ever the groundbreaking for the town center. Several occasions when I would go visit Harden and Bonnie Lee, I would talk about you know what our plans, what our vision was for the town. Talk about it in terms of we've never had build our after 50 years of being an incorporated community. Paul Van Harden up at uh, Farmers Market this afternoon. Said, Dan, have you seen our downtown? And sure enough, as he was driving into town to go to our quite complimentary of, of what we oh, he can tell he's not on WHO radio anymore, but uh, talks to a lot of people yet because uh, he's. that uh, beats that, that Johnston finally has their down. That was a fun conversation. Anything else for the good or the order? If not, we are adjourned.